That was very considerate of you. I feel like in this frame, it's just look at Sean's dick. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> I don't have a dick. I, I mean, don't have that problem. it's not bad to look at, <laughs> but <laughs> but I definitely am like maybe we scooch in a scooch, so it's not just the penis show. How is that? The penis on the <laughs> bisexual show. Much better, in my Yay. opinion. Once again, how, I, no, how vain are you? No, I um, I will do a whole video sometimes, and then I will um, redo it because I hate the frame, and I don't want to crop in because it'll make it blurry. So you're more vain than me. Oh, I'm <laughs> you can't do a no, YouTube you channel me? with your name as the name of the channel and not be vain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I shouldn't probably use the F word on this, whatever. Yeah, just beep it out or whatever. Ding. It should be a, a horse whinny or something. <laughs> <laughs> or just that. You should do your own sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> now I'm doing that. That, you just did it. <laughs> Here we Cheers. are. By the way, this is non-alcoholic for all you mom haters out there. This is um, alcoholic yes. for all you mom lovers. Not happy yours, Pride. Yours, happy Pride. Happy Pride. Is this your first Pride being out? Yeah. Holy fart balls. I know. That's, I did that so that you wouldn't have to go, ha ha! Thank you, although the more ha ha we have, the better at this point, because now- People are gonna unsubscribe immediately. They're like, if they keep doing that, I'm done. Hi everyone, I'm Jenica Hill. Welcome back to my channel, which is all about embracing and celebrating your full magical self. Yes. This is my friend, Sean. Hi. Very talented actor. You are. I know, and you're just so sweet. Thank you so much for making me feel good. Well, of course. You, <laughs> I, mean, I, I wouldn't lie. If you were I bad, I would <laughs> I wanted to have Sean on as a guest for Pride Month, because Sean is... A homosexual? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've talked about this, though, on the spectrum. Not all the way homosexual, but not on this, on the homosexual side of the barometer. Right, we're not, we don't get to claim him as bi. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take that away from someone or that story. But I definitely have been attracted to women and uh, am still attracted to women. Uh, it's just a rare unicorn of a woman. Well, how would you describe the unicorn or is it, it like a feeling? Her? Oh, it's weirdly, um, they have to, and this is, it goes back to me being straight. They have to be a majestic human that like, are, we've all met them where they're like, wow, you're gorgeous and you're talented and you're wholesome and you're sexy and you're you do everything so that's a shout out to every girl I've ever dated because they are that um and <laughs> then you're like you're like well of course I'm attracted to you because everyone's attracted to you you know right. what I mean mm -hmm. so um I don't I don't know but it's an energy thing the last time I was like in a bar and some girl we started chatting and then I was like I am shockingly overwhelmingly attracted to you and everything about you and mm -hmm. i only want to hang out with you and then she right when i was thinking that she was like i only want to talk to you tonight and i was like <laughs> i was like 14. i was like <laughs> I, really i was like <laughs> <laughs> me too i have to go to the bathroom you know. i love you <laughs> i mean i love you you want to make i want to get married i never saw her again Oh, wow. Should I say her name? Just because she was so majestic? Sure. Her name was Maggie. She'll never see this. If you're like, I'm Maggie, and I saw you, Sean, at a bar. Reach out. You're majestic, and you're my long-lost lover. A witch tattooed you right here, and it's a rose. Oh, my goodness. Anyone that gets a tattoo from a witch. It, yeah. Has my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Better Things? No. By chance? Oh, great show. Oh, What's great that? show. It's on Hulu now, but it was on FX. It's Pamela Adlon. Her show, she created it with Louis C.K. Didn't write with him anymore after everything with him happened. Mm. But um, it's about... Which, let me just say, and I'm probably, this is not, it, it, I'm not, it, it's so frustrating when that happens. Yeah. When we fall in love with someone because they're so great, and then you see the underbelly and you're like, yeah. ew. And, and it hurts so much so more. Like, good. why are you, why did you have to be a weirdo? Yeah, why <laughs> like did a bad someone date? hurt you and then you hurt someone else? Right. Yeah. And, you know. Point being, it's about her. She's a, basically playing herself-ish. She's a child actor and like voiceover actor. 
There's this one lesbian character in the sh- in the show that's in season three, and she's like a manager, and Pamela Adlon plays like you know an actor. So she, she has a different manager, but this manager talks to her on this movie, and she's one of those women that mm-hmm. I'm like my partner and I were like we're both attracted. You to her, both right? have like you have, oh that's Pamela Adlon. Hey girl. Okay, sorry. <laughs> But she, uh, yeah, she's just, in the way she looks at Pamela Adlon in the show, you're just like, oh my god, please have sex with her. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I have sex with her, yeah. It, do you think, do you think your lover has that about guys? I, I can't <laughs> he speak for him. He will never tell you. He will definitely admit when a man is, like, clearly attractive. Like, I love that. Yeah. I love that. It makes me so happy. One of the happy. things about being bi is mm-hmm. we can just be like, they're hot, they're hot, and he's right. open to saying it about men too. So it's like just and it fun... doesn't mean you're gonna go out and bang him. It just no. means yo, Liam Hemsworth is real attractive. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and they wouldn't bang us anyway, so it's fine. We're safe. Right. <laughs> well, maybe not you. Yeah, no, you. But... <laughs> you're pregnant. <laughs> That's I'm why. Pregnant. I should say that too. I'm not a representation for all gays. This is the disclaimer. It should be really fast. It's like not. Just... But it, it's so funny that people do see that you have a show and then they're like, oh, so now you're speaking for everyone. And it's like, no, I'm not speaking for anyone but me. Yeah, exactly. I'm only speaking for me. My channel is my name. Yeah. It's like, when <laughs> it's did not, this become it's that? It's not bisexual bitches or something. It's like Jenica Hill. <laughs> Why is it not bisexual batches? I don't know. Okay, oh now I need to change it. First question I have to ask you, what does it mean to you? to be your full magical self. Oh, I forgot you were gonna ask that. What it means to me to be my full magical self. People will tell me that things about me are not necessarily right or flawed or something along those lines and, and coming to terms with those are me and those are my superpower. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yes. coming to terms with that realization that like everything you said about me that was quote unquote wrong is actually right and that intimidated you and now I'm po- more powerful than you yes you know yes. it's it's when ever everyone goes do you do you play straight because I don't think you can play straight and I'm like no all my characters are gay all of them some of them sleep with women but all of them are gay because guess what that's my superpower and that's my gay and my authenticity and when I play a role it's my wild card that gets me the job I love that as opposed to trying to change everything about me to try and be straight and go back into the closet to play some role Mm -hmm. that's going to come off fake because when you're not your authentic self or your full magical self you're hiding something and yeah no one is attracted to that Mm. that is so true i actually i wanted that to be a topic one day so it's perfect about using like all the things people used to bully me for yeah now are like the things that make me so special and, yeah and powerful yeah yeah if you're being bullied at all if you're young don't worry one day that'll be your superpower 100 percent. yeah uh, also i think about all of the the most incredible artists that have the most amazing brains are usually the people that were bullied Mm-hmm. Because you had to come yeah. up with a different bent on life. You had to k- pick yourself up every day. You had to trudge through. We uh, and I g- group us together because I think we both probably had awkward moments growing up where it wasn't like, like you're a very attractive woman now, you know, oh, and so you get the pass now. And I, I don't think I'm unattractive, so it's like, okay, cool. And our agent calls you handsome, Sean. So. <laughs> the value we put on beauty, and that is not forgotten and maybe highlighted in the gay community. And that's something we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have talked about a lot because when you pick yourself up after being hated so horribly and then you reemerge, you would reemerge and a lot of physical uh, appearances are taken into, uh, I don't know, it's given value, more value than other things sometimes. Yeah, that's interesting because I, you know, obviously I'm not a gay man, but like my friends Wait. who are, right? What? But my friends who are. Why am I here? Are... I thought this was a hookup. <laughs> 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 the weirdest um, interview of a hookup. So we're going to, oh, we're going to do a. That's why I gave you a beer. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> um, yeah, but I've no, I noticed that 
among my gay gay male friends. It's like, damn, you have so much to live up to in terms of muscle tone and abs. That's all I gotta say. Oh abs are these things I was thinking about the other day and it's like I work out a lot and I'm like pretty in I I in, I, 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 I like the way I look. I want to look good, obviously. Yeah. But abs are those things it's like you you you're something you have decided to give up on something to get abs because they're in, yes. impossible to get if you are living <laughs> this sounds horrible but living life to the fullest yes. if you're enjoying food or you're enjoying drink or you're enjoying rest and taking off days and you're enjoying vacations and stuff like that you don't have abs but it is it is now the standard in the gay community that it, to be hot you have to have abs or you're really? in a sub subsect like you're a bear or you're a twink or you're a right but in like standard gaze we're expecting you to have abs what are you considered um, uh, that no um <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is that's perfect i think i'm a twas like a twink that was yeah. oh my god <laughs> And I can't get, I can't take credit for that. My best friend in New York, he was like, we're both twas. We were, we're twas. And I laughed so hard because if oh you're a thespian of any kind, it's so Shakespearean. But it is. Yeah. I think that I'm a, a twas because I definitely was a twink at some point. Yeah. And then I like morphed. And now I'm like, I still have a lot of boyish energy and charm, but I'm not. 21 or 18. What? But might you be an otter? What's an otter? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I am an otter. No, no, no. I'm, I'm hairless. Oh, Is so it you... Otter? I have to look that up. Jeez, I'm you're so... Right. I, you're more in the know about gays than me. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm actually probably using all the terms wrong. No, it's like there's bears and you have to... You're like hairy and... And daddies, big, right? And dad that's like a little older and thick. Um, and, but and... Uh, I'm pretty sure otters have, they're thin, but hairy. Cause it's okay, like, okay, thin, but hairy. Yeah, I'm just that like, makes sense. I'm just a really just... attractive naked mole rat. <laughs> I'm just a guy. Yeah. And that's something coming to terms with, that mm. I'm, I was talking to you about, like, I'm wearing a basic t-shirt right now. Yeah. But when I was going to come here, I was like, oh, I've got to wear this like floral print, da da da. And then I was like, this isn't an audition, Sean. This yeah. is, this is your authentic self. Your, and right. my authentic self is basics with wardrobe. Cause I'm not yeah. super flashy and sexy gap. Yeah. yeah <laughs> sexy gap. It fits you right. You look good. You're conventional. But, um, when, people say like, you're representing gays. It's like, I immediately go like, I have to be something I'm not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. super fabulous or like really chic. And I, I'm just not that. I'm not good at interior decorating. All the stereotypes of gays are, are really not me. And mm -hmm. I think that that also holds people back from coming out because we put all these stereotypes on what it is to be gay mm -hmm. that then you're like, well, that doesn't resonate with me. I'm really, really glad you decided to wear what you would normally wear because yeah. I think it's such an important point. I, I like fun shoes and I like <laughs> fun glasses, but the rest of it is basics. I'm wearing freaking khakis, shorts, and a solid color shirt. I'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of guy. I like it. I love it. Yeah. I want some more of it. Coming out. Coming out. We both came out late, but obviously with you, they're just like, oh, isn't it perfect? You know what I mean? And with yes. me, everyone's like, I thought you were, no? You know, and it's like, I did like musical theater and I like watched Annie a million times. I'm like, I was so quintessentially like gay as a kid. And I think my parents were just like, cool, we're going to roll with this. My parents are freaking awesome and totally, I don't, I don't have that war story mm -hmm. about like, very unfortunate situations like where when people come out, I don't, I, I don't have that story that wasn't part of, I'm thankful for that. I mean, wow, I can't imagine. I've heard so many stories where I'm like, I, don't, I would be dead, I would 100% be dead. Yeah. Uh, or gutted or broken beyond repair. Um, but my parents are like super cool with mm -hmm. it all. And That's honestly, great. the weird part about it though, is it made me judge myself 
off of things because we didn't talk about it. They just didn't, they didn't say we were cool with you being gay or like you should be, <laughs> like there was no encouragement to be gay. And it's interesting because I just went home and my mom said she wished she had handled that differently. She wished mm. she, had, she had encouraged the, what she knew was already there. Mm. As opposed to just being kind of like, we're just not going to talk about it and like he'll figure it out, you know? I actually just heard that on a podcast. I don't remember what it was, but they were saying like when parents say, oh, we knew all along. They're like, well, why didn't you encourage me then? Yeah. Like, but it's, I'm sure as a parent, it's hard because you don't want to like force that conversation. Right. You want them to figure it out for themselves and like feel empowered in it, you know? But, right. Well, I mean, it's kind of like when I came out and my mom was like, she was my mom was fabulous. We were at a bar and she was like, who are you dating? And I was like, oh, a guy named Adam. And she was like, oh, 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 we need to get another drink. And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. You're, you're wonderful and talented and beautiful and handsome and all the, I mean, she said all these words and I was like, and then she goes, and I can't wait to meet the man that falls in love with you. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> she's like so, she was like so ready and I'm very emotional today. So, um, I mean, but she that's was like, making me emotional. <laughs> she was like, I can't wait. She goes, so let me get another drink. And I was like, yeah. And then she came back to the table and she was like, you know, I, I the only thing that makes me as a parent like hiccup is you're going to have a harder life. And I was like, yeah, but I'll be okay. And she goes, yeah, you stay in big cities and like, you know, like Midwestern ideals in her brain and stuff. But it was like, yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? That like, that was the only thing, you know, but mm -hmm. back to her saying she was, she had encouraged it, you know, that kind of thing. I said, I don't know if I would have been okay with that. Cause someone, when I was 14, that was very close to me. I was going through, I developed OCD. I developed a lot of brain. I developed a lot of problems when I was having impulses of being gay. Mm -hmm. And I was so far in the closet that I didn't know I was gay mm -hmm. anymore because I had like brainwashed myself. Yep. I was washing my hands all the time. I was like avoiding gay people. I like created a lot of stuff. And being in the arts and theater and musical theater, avoiding gay people is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I got so bad. I had a, a nervous breakdown. I literally was in LA when I was 22 and I was living with my dear friends in their guest house and I couldn't go into the house cause I had claimed it as dirty, like in my brain, like OCD land that I had created. And I was taking a shower in their backyard with a hose. I, I just had a breakdown, you know, like in a backyard, literally just having a mental breakdown and they were mm -hmm. like, you gotta go get help. You gotta get help. And then that's when I think I found my path again, mm -hmm. where I was like, I don't have OCD. I'm not afraid of what typical OCD was, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess obsessive compulsive disorder has a lot of different things, but I didn't have like, mine was made up. I like watched a Lifetime movie and then decided to play the part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, um, I, I realized I didn't have a, have, I went through behavioral therapy and got rid of all the things I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I got back to LA and I booked a series regular on a show and, um, I fell in love with my co-star and I was having a lot of heartache about it and I was hanging out with one of my gay friends at the time and he was like, okay, I'm going to rip the band-aid off. You know, he was like, have you ever been attracted to men? And I was like, no. And he goes, I think you have. Um, have you, w would you be open to it? And I was like, I'm open. He goes, you're so not open to it. Mm. He goes, so basically everything you think you're doing in life you're not doing. And he goes, I think you need to think about it a little harder because if you are open to it, I challenge you to make out with the guy and get as far as you can. He goes, because I think you're going to unlock something and realize you're really actually into it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm. which kind of goes to uh, along the lines of like, you have to have sex to know you're gay, which is not something I believe, mm -hmm. but in a weird way, that was kind of my litmus test. Yeah. 
Well, I think... Litmus test. Sorry, yes. isn't that an M? Litmus. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Good job, good call, good call, good catch. Yeah, I mean, I think like if I had started thinking I was bisexual when I was younger, that would have been an easier way to like decide it was true, you know? Which I know yeah. a lot of like viewers of this channel feel the same. They're like, well, I don't know if I'm just lying to myself because I've never been with a woman. Yeah. It's usually women that say this to me. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard, but you kind of have to just go, I have to trust myself. Yeah, my you know? instincts. Yeah. Because why I think would back, I feel this way if I wasn't? And like, why would I feel the need to tell people? And because we have them when we're kids. You yes. have the impulses when you're a kid, when you you're not totally. judging yourself. Exactly. Sorry, keep going. No, that that's it. That's true. So yeah, I don't know. Like the whole, my coming out was great. My dad, everyone said they knew. Everyone said they knew, you know, and everyone was waiting. And then I was like, was that validating to, to you though? For them to say we knew or was it like... No. Insulting, sort of. I don't know if it's insulting. It's a little bit like, and maybe this echoes with you, I don't know, but maybe not because, like, I feel like this is this is totally my interpretation of your coming out story. Sure. Was that you realized it, and as you were realizing it, you were validating it and moving forward with it. Mm -hmm. So you were like, oh, I'm attracted to women. I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep exploring this. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think mine was more along the lines of like, I'm attracted to men. I don't want this. I'm going to pull back. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I'm a, this is, I'm a sexual human. We all are. Yeah. And it kept flaring up. And then I'm always constantly trying to throw it and put it down. It's almost like a Papa Weasel game where it's like, no, 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 yes. no, 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 yeah. no, no, we're fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost like you're pushing it down. Yeah. And finally they all pop up and you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. There it is. You know what I mean? Then you, then you can calm down and then it's a beautiful, oh, hopefully beautiful. I don't know. Mine is. Yeah. For me, it was that when I was young, but then I just shoved it so far deep inside that it didn't come out uh, up again till I was older and able to more I think process it do you know what I mean right and so there and there was there was a lot of heartache involved because I was like I'm with someone who I want to be with the rest of my life like if this is true yeah. of me then I, I don't I know betraying? what this means yeah, yeah exactly am I betraying this person and so and this is interesting hearing you say that because when you were like oh when people tell were like when they say oh I knew all that kind of stuff which I just I hate that response I do hate it because it's like oh okay great thanks for you know oh you knew me so much better than me right great. you're better you know what I mean it's like I don't know why people get validation off as like I knew you were gay it's like I used to be get that the person. Pride out of that. I have a friend who, like, well, a few friends that, who, that came out as gay, and I was like, I so knew they were gay. After coming out as bi, like, I had someone on my channel like comment and say, I think you're a lesbian, and you're blah blah blah, and I was like, um, excuse me, and I got so annoyed, I made a whole video about it, mm. and um, I was like, it made me do a whole like self reflection thing. Also, it's like, oh, you're looking at weird markers that are stereotypes. And yeah, it's a stereotype. Also, it's like from movies you've seen. I feel like also coming out, the one of the things that I struggled with is that it felt like I was living a lie. Mm. Or what that's what people were telling me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't feel like I was living a lie. A portion of my life I wasn't realizing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't actively living a lie. Right. Like I wasn't walking through life lying about myself. I, I found all the loopholes to live an authentic life. Yeah. I found the girl that I was attracted to. I found these things that I made it work. Mm -hmm. So when people were like, you were living a lie before you were living a lie. And it's like, okay. So then I had to struggle. I struggled with this, like, no, no, all those feelings were valid. All those I, I, I was incredibly attracted to this girl. I was into this, this life I was living. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't not, I wasn't not living an authentic life. I just wasn't living my full, which is like what I think you're saying, full magical self. Like I wasn't yeah. living my full potential. I yes. was living a portion of my life. I equated to like, I was living in a room my whole life. 
And then one day I realized I was gay and I opened up a door and I'm like, holy f <laughs> I'm in a mansion. Oh my gosh. You know what I so mean? That's beautiful, yeah. But it's like, I live in a whole mansion and I've only been living in this room. Now that room is still a room that I like. It's still a, my study or whatever in yeah. my mansion. But I have so many other rooms now. Yeah. And now I can... I, and now no door is closed. Like maybe I don't live in a mansion. Maybe I live in a villa. Maybe I live in a country. Maybe I live in a planet. Like there, it's endless how big this house is. And yeah. I'm never going to say like, I won't do anything again. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to say like, when people are like, oh, so you'll never sleep with a woman again. And I'm like, I'm never going to say that. Cause I don't know if that's true. Right. Who knows? I could literally walk out of here after this and meet the love of my life. And she could be a woman. Yeah. Or a non-binary human, or right. you know what I mean? Like there's so many options. It's exciting. It's exciting to realize I live in a <laughs> mansion. And yeah. I, I lived 27 years of my life in a room. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. I love that. It's so visual. Yeah. Yeah. I always say too, I'm like, maybe at one point we'll get to the point where we don't have to label people as gay or straight or bi or Wouldn't pan. Wouldn't that be a great, or, perfect And people world. can just fall in love. I mean, 100% humans created this. Yeah. The, the problem with all of what's happened in our world is that it wasn't just, oh, well, 75% of these this bubble of humans are, are straight and then this other sect are gay. And okay, cool. That's our population. It wasn't that. It was these people are straight and these people are doing everything are wrong. wrong. Yeah. I wanted to ask to close. Well, was there anything you feel like- I you was going to ask you something. A what? Well, I was going to say, what are you most prou uh, proud of? Most proud Being, of? You know, in your gay journey. Oh, in my gay journey. In you my... know, because you're, it's pride. So like what you, Jenica, what are you most proud of? I think, I think I'm most proud of how I went about coming out like I'm proud you mean this celebration uh, yeah. or what do you mean <laughs> like I'm proud of um the care that I took with myself first and then with my partner and then with people around me like I I just I'm proud of that process for myself yes. uh, like that you weren't just like I'm gay get on board with it if you're not going to be okay with it then yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Well, I just tried to make it healthy for me so that I wasn't damaging relationships Nothing. or damaging my relationship with myself. Like, I, I needed to come out to myself first and then, you know, and I did so much journaling and so much thinking and so much reflection. And then, honestly, I brought it to, like, best friends and my partner at the same time, but it was, like, a very serious conversation with my partner when it happened. So it was like... Because you can't go back on it. The yeah. moment you talk about being, having feelings of this kind, and that's why most people are so afraid to talk about it, you know, because, because the moment you real. say it out loud, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, at first I would make sort of jokes about it because we have a lot of gay friends. So when we're in that community, I'll be like, I think I'm bi, you know, and I would be able to say it and it would be like in this fun way. And then, you know, he would be like, yeah, it, but then... At one point, it was like, no, this is like... No, like, I'm, I, I'm saying... I'm and I was like, crying, <laughs> you know, and I was like, this is real, I don't know, it's like eating me up inside and stuff, and so... It sucks sometimes that I came out so late, but it, I think it happened that way for a reason for me. Because yeah. I knew who I was already. Like, I had done all this self-love work and was starting to really love myself, and I think that's why I was able... To Ugh, come out. That's beautiful because I think a lot of people, and even myself included, hate it right away. Mm. You know what I mean? That's probably why it took me so long to come out is because I was like, I don't want this. Yeah. And now, oh, I was telling my mom this when I was home. I was like, I love being gay. I love it. Like, I realize it's, it's, not, it's not sexual. It's like... I'm just so happy that I'm a part of this community. I'm so happy that I have, n I'm not living a heteronormative life. Self-love should happen first. Yeah. Because if you can't love yourself, you ain't. You know, how, you, how the hell are you gonna love someone else? Exactly, but I do think. I couldn't even say that quote. Literally, I can't <laughs> recall on this. We should probably redo that. Do you it. You can't love yourself. How the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Okay, give me my card you back. You did it. <laughs> I want to celebrate pride, but it's also different. 
Mm. For me to celebrate it than, like, for you to celebrate it, you know? Potentially. In my mind it is. You know, that's Because I'm like, some people went through more struggle than I did to claim this. Even though I feel like by, there's a whole, there's but a whole struggle in that. But that's quantifying something we can't quantify. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. By saying, like my struggle like it's like me coming out and not having horrible parents you know what I mean it's like just because I didn't have horrible parents and I didn't have a horrible upbringing I wasn't cast aside as the this problem mm -hmm. I was loved and embraced in all ways yeah. that doesn't mean that my coming out is less valid than someone else's just my journey is different yeah and yours is too that's true yeah. That's very true. That's important. Thank you for saying that. Of course. <laughs> a personal friend of mine posted an image online and it was every color of the rainbow. And, you know, it was like LGBTQ, you know, it went like all the way down. And it was AA and one of them they claimed as allies. And it was like allies, usually not a queer individual, but is a supporter of, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, That bothered you? Yeah. yeah. And then I read his post and I was like, exactly. We, we're not celebrating allies in this. I, we love you. We love everything about allies. Mm -hmm. We love that people are out there that want to embrace us and have us live a fully equal life. Mm -hmm. But this moment we're in right now, pride and having a month where we're doing, is not celebrating allies. We're celebrating others. We're celebrating this community of queer individuals. And that isn't something we can, we are allowed to celebrate every day. I mean, we're allowed to, but society doesn't tell us we're allowed to. Right. Or traditionally or pushes it down. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially when you think about the history of it, because the history of it was literally fighting for the right to exist. Yeah. You know, and it, violently yeah. so it's like yeah this is not i mean a lot some people are like this isn't a celebration at all some people don't it's even. it's a march yeah exactly my friend my friend in um new york used to always say that the people would be like you going to gay pride and then he'd be like the gay march the gay mm -hmm. march because we got to remember this is a march this was a protest to close to close <laughs> I would love for you to share any Get advice naked. you would give. Get naked and then share. No, I'm kidding. But just any advice you would give for someone who is struggling with maybe being gay or and is just in that place of like, I really want to come out, but I'm so scared. What would you say to them? I, I guess, I, I guess, I guess, like my advice to like kids and to anyone. I mean, even an adult, it's yeah. never, that's another thing. It's never too late to come out. I guess that's my advice because I came out what, that's another thing is I say I came out late and then someone's like, would you ever tell someone that they came out late? And I was like, no, I would never say that. Then they go, why do you keep saying it to yourself? Oh. And I was like, ah, that's true. You know what I mean? I would never yeah. tell you, Jenica, you came out late because you didn't come out at seven years old and dance right. around the streets as a bisexual, power, powerful woman. It took you that, you know, it took you 20 more years to mm -hmm. realize you're a bisexual, powerful woman. Mm -hmm. And it took me 27 years to come out as a powerful, maybe not right away, but like it did, you know, and yeah. I felt like an imposter at the beginning too, you know, because I had trained myself into some other focusing on other parts of life yeah but yeah I guess that's my advice it's it's never too late because I think that when we give advice we always give it to kids and right. there are so many people out there that are not kids mm -hmm. that need to hear you can start living your full magical self authenticity at any point even if you're 97 yes because who knows when you rather live one day of authenticity, one hour, one minute, then keep struggling in a path that you're not happy in. Mm hmm I agree. So I guess that's my advice. It's great advice. Maybe I should get a t-shirt printed. It's never, never too, too late. late. Sean Hankinson. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Dan Savage. <laughs>
so Sean, how can people find you on the internet, Instagram or whatever? Yeah, Instagram, my full yeah. name. So it's at Sean Hankinson. That'll probably appear. I'll put it uh, in the description. Oh, okay. So people it's in the description, it. which is probably below us. Below. But if you're, you know, if we're upside down, then it's, uh, no, it's not going to happen. We should do the whole thing. Um, upside I'm going to put us upside down <laughs> just for that moment. Just for that moment. So uh, it's up here. This episode is an editing nightmare. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it really is an editing nightmare. It's okay. I did not make it easy. Thank you so much. Thank you. I and love thank you. you. I love you. I love you. I love Target. I do too. Like you. I just sometimes go. Oh, I know. And if, if I go, I, I stay there for so long that I always, always have to And you always buy something. Oh. <laughs> I wish I had said the same thing. <laughs> Nothing would have made me happier. Uh, it, I always should have we to redo it where head. I say it just no, right? No, it's, uh, it's... Let's make it a thing. It shows <laughs> the difference between our personalities. I'm like, you always, always have something. to buy something in your poop. <laughs>